Um, hello everyone. Uh, I'm going to talk about uh, nutrition IC material. Uh, we have created this uh, really nice uh, IC material for many of these important nutrients. Uh, when you show these charts to uh, mothers or families or uh, anybody that you know, they, they get so much of knowledge. And for this, I really kind of, uh, you know, thank uh, Dr. Ratna Thar and Dipali. Uh, both of them are uh, nutritionists. Dr. Ratna Thar, she is a PhD nutrition scientist. Uh, and uh, with, without their help, we are, you know, we would not have been able to uh, make these charts. So starting with protein, protein one of the most important uh, nutrient. Uh, here we have shown a vegetarian source of protein. Uh, of course, you want to make sure that you know vegetarians they get uh, some amount of first class protein. First class protein means uh, complete protein. Um, you know, they have all nine essential amino acids and it's easy to absorb, okay. Uh, fully bio bio biologically available. Uh, so you have your milk and milk products. Uh, very important for uh, all the mothers, uh, adolescent girls, boys, uh, you know, pre-pregnant mothers. Uh, also important for pregnant and lactating mothers uh, and children about two years of age, especially milk, you know. Uh, we don't recommend milk under two years of age because mothers are giving their own breast milk. Uh, but if after, I mean, obviously you want to continue breast milk as long as possible. But if, uh, you know, children, they get wind off uh, breast milk after two years of age, you can start uh, cow's milk. Full fat, make sure that you don't remove fat for any age. Uh, curd should be again with full fat. Uh, cottage cheese, uh, you know, a lot of this uh, other uh, protein rich foods are your beans, your soya, pulses, okay. Make sure to sprout them. Uh, groundnut, uh, millets, your seeds are high in, uh, you know, your protein. Uh, groundnut, of course, as I mentioned. Uh, try to make nut and seed powder because obviously uh, children, they don't, uh, you know, uh, bite on it. You don't want to give it to young children. So you can make a powder, roast it and make a powder and you can store it in the fridge for a, for a week or so, okay? Uh, some of these French beans, they also high in protein. Uh, drumstick leaves and powders, dry leafy vegetables. Those are also, you know, uh, almost 100 grams of uh, leafy uh, spinach has almost 3 grams of protein. So if you dry it, you know, it will become really small amount. It's a concentrated form. So they are also high in proteins. Okay. Uh, another one is your protein-rich non-vegetarian recipe. So uh, here is some of the sources of non-veg uh, non sources. Uh, you know, your eggs, organ meat, mutton, chicken, fish. Uh, you know, your fish eggs, whereas seafood, very good, excellent source of protein, uh, very highly bio biologically available, uh, important that, uh, you know, uh, if if mother is non-vegetarian or anybody in the family is non-vegetarian, to start uh, babies on non-veg food, because those babies have, you know, will get all the nutrients which are required, those, they have very high type 2 nutrients, beside type 1 nutrient also, type 2 is very, very high, okay. Uh, one thing you want to remember that the vegetarian source, uh, you know, the viability is uh, not as good as uh, non-veg protein. So if you're giving vegetarian uh, source of protein to children, you will have to increase the amount of protein, okay, in, uh, from food because uh, bioavailability bio, bio is not 100%. Bioability means the the, uh, the amount that get absorbed. Uh, folate, folate is really good, uh, important as you know. Uh, folic acid is the chemical form. Uh, folate is the uh, form which comes from food. Uh, want to give it definite to to girls, uh, you know, to all age groups. Very important, specifically for pre-pregnant pregnant mothers. Uh, food sources, your non-rich food. Again, as I want you to write down in your diary which food is coming again and again and again because if those foods have so many nutrient, uh, nutrients in, in those uh, foods, those are superfoods, you know. So you want to just make sure that child gets or anybody gets those food on a day-to-day -day basis. They'll get a lot of other nutrients also. Uh, your fish is high in folate. Uh, your, again, sprouts, you know, leafy vegetables are high in folate. Uh, some of the fruits are also high in folate. Kidney beans are high in folate. Okay, so you want to make sure that you uh, give folate to um, all age groups. Okay, uh, calcium. Uh, 
Uh, of course, for babies who are exclusively breastfed under six months, uh, you feed to the mother and all that nutrient will come to baby in the form of milk. You know, so milk will be rich in all this type of nutrients. Uh, calcium, as you know, dairy products, uh, your non-veg food like crabs and dry fish, leafy vegetables are high in protein, uh, sorry, calcium. Uh, then your soya beans, soya chunk, finger millets are high, uh, your sprouts, uh, and your ginger lay seeds, so your uh, seeds are very high in calcium, okay, especially your uh, sesame seeds. Make sure you roast them so that your xalates go down. Uh, you know, uh, I also recommend to kind of cook all these green leafy vegetables. Uh, oxalates are high in green leafy vegetables, so you want to, uh, once you cook it, the oxalate level goes down. Otherwise, the risk of uh, kidney stones are high, okay. Uh, you can also take some amount of dahi you know, with those leafy vegetables that will reduce the oxalate levels. Uh, iron, uh, we all are iron deficient uh, in India specifically. Uh, most of us are iron deficient, especially uh, you know uh, children and women between 19 to uh, you know 45 years of age. Uh, good, the best source of iron is liver. There's no doubt. Uh, any red meat, eggs, fish. Uh, some of the vegetarian source of iron, all the viability is poor in vegetarian source, uh, but nevertheless, you have uh, you know your le leafy vegetables, beans, soya chunk. Again, soya chunk is coming again and again. You know, horse gram, ho uh, whole lentils. Uh, some of this, uh, you know, your millets, uh, amaranth seeds, pearl millet. Uh, you know, garden cress seeds uh, and turmeric powder. Okay, uh, you want to make sure that when you have iron, you have uh, vitamin C with it. So any food which is high in vitamin C, you can have it with iron. Magnesium, these are the food which are high in magnesium. As you can see, a non veg source is very poor. Okay, so if you are uh, eating, giving non veg food to children or if you are eating non veg food, make sure that you eat, you know, you put a lot of this uh, of vegetarian food in that non veg or you eat with it so that uh, you know you get enough magnesium okay so you're again leafy vegetables see how how important this leafy vegetables are it has come in all your uh, type 2 nutrients and type 1 nutrient as well right um, your uh, you know water chestnuts um, again your sprouts are coming in all the all the uh, so far that we have seen cow peas is important your buckwheat could too uh, you know your uh, that's really important in fact i had gone to chhattisgarh in jashpur and they had uh, huge amount of buckwheat uh, agriculture over there. So I saw that, you know, first time. Uh, your mix uh, seeds, uh, high in magnesium, and your ragi millet, okay? So that's your magnesium. Uh, magnesium is important, again, for cramps. You know, if you're getting headaches, if you get a body ache, or if you, if you have difficulty sleeping, uh, eating magnesium-rich food in the evening will definitely help. Okay, uh, phosphorus, uh, again, your non veg food, leafy vegetable, dairy products, millets, you know, your dals, sprouts, uh, and your uh, amaranth seeds. Okay, so that's your phosphorus. Important for uh, bones, for teeth. Okay, uh, uh, potassium. Potassium is, uh, again, you can see that uh, hardly any non veg source of potassium. Very high in uh, leafy vegetables. You know, uh, potato has some amount of potassium, yam, kidney beans, all your beans are high in potassium. Uh, some of the fruits are also high in potassium. Uh, guava, uh, banana, jackfruit, okay. Uh, try to have your uh, banana, raw banana, because raw banana will uh, give you good amount of potassium at the same time your sugar level will, uh, you know, sugar in raw banana is much lower. Okay, so you can try that. Uh, zinc, uh, zinc is again, uh, all non veg foods are high in zinc. Uh, leafy vegetables, uh, you know, your beans, uh, your sprouts, the dals, uh, sesame seeds are high in zinc, you know, seeds are high in zinc, uh, pearl millet. Okay, uh, then you have your vitamin C. Vitamin C is again, you know, as I told you, you need vitamin C for your. Uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, food which is high in iron, especially uh, non-heme iron, will require vitamin C for absorption. Okay, so uh, opt for uh, vitamin C uh, rich fruits, but uh, the the ones which are low on sugar. Okay, because we don't want to increase our blood glucose level as well. Uh, lemon water with salt, amazing. Uh, I drink it all the time. 
uh, lot of your leafy vegetables uh, vitamin c is quite labile so you want to make sure that you understand um, you try to have you know uh, lemon lemon is good because you don't heat it up so you know vitamin c will not get uh, destroyed okay aula especially in uh, winter season you can have aula chavan prash without sugar uh, here use your vitamin a uh, all your you know uh, rich Uh, like liver is extremely rich in vitamin A. It has retinol. Similarly, eggs. So very good bioavailable uh, bio vitamin A. Uh, you know your vegetarian food has uh, more of a carotenoid, less bioavailable. Okay, and it has to go through conversion from carotenoid to um, uh, you know your uh, uh, retinol. And uh, some of your tomatoes, carrots, uh, some of the fruits are high in uh, vitamin A. You know sprouts. the moon uh, lo leafy powders are high in vitamin a okay so leafy green leafy vegetables and orange uh, vegetables and fruits omega 3 fatty acids you know uh, my focus is really dha and epa uh, so have food which are high in dha and epa if you're not taking uh, fish then you can try those uh, capsicum fish oil i do recommend it uh, some source um, available in vegetarian sources but uh, those are mainly in the form of ala uh and those uh, ala's uh, conversion rate to dhap is very very low okay uh, just maybe hardly 4 to 6% so uh, dha would definitely lack in uh, pregnant uh, you know your uh, mothers or children who are eating only vegetarian foods uh methionine this is a sulfated amino acids again i spoke about uh, you know we have a tutorial on sulfur so you must have learned about methionine and cysteine uh methionine is uh, uh, one nutrient uh, which is lacking in uh, pulses so here you will not see pulses right uh, which foods are high in methionine your uh, dairy products your lamb you know your mutton eggs uh, chicken so all your non veg foods are high in methionine Uh, onion your prawns uh, sweet potatoes leafy vegetables bitter gourd uh, scarlet beans was a high in methionine if you're vegetarian i would definitely have two to three servings of dairy okay to have your methionine uh, cysteine is important uh, again in self sulfur you must have heard about glutathione and you know your um, Uh, your NAC, N-acetyl cysteine, uh, extremely important for immunity and uh, for detoxification also, especially glutathione. Okay. Um, uh, also, this is a sulfur-rich amino acid. This is amino acid, so it's very high in sulfur. Important for anything which has keratin. Okay. So uh, you know your for hair, your skin, your uh, your eyes. It's all keratinized tissue. So you want to make sure that you have enough cysteine and methionine. okay because keratin is uh, you required sulfur to make those keratin uh, as you can see you know this all the food uh, again dairy products very important then you have a uh, for healthy skin so if you want healthy skin uh, this are all the uh, you know food products that you want to have uh, eggs as you can see eggs have come in pretty much all the all the charts even dairy products even your uh, beans except for methionine you know so include this kind of food uh, on a day to day basis you know so that you will get uh, much better skin okay uh, of course non veg is always there healthy hair uh, again we have included food which is high in sulfur uh, for keratin protein uh, those are important okay um, so again your mushrooms garlic you know leafy vegetables uh, you know have your peanuts sesame seeds we have created powder on peanut and sesame seed you can use it in your diet okay and the non veg there is no doubt uh, here we have healthy uh, sorry uh, i think we have already gone through healthy skin uh, here is appetite increasing food so this uh, again we have included food which are high in type 2 nutrient that will improve appetite in children because they start growing and then when you they, they increase in uh, uh, you know growth you want to give them food which are high in type 1 type 2 nutrient so don't give them junk food you know so here again your non veg food uh, dahi uh, your uh, green leafy vegetables seeds and nuts and your dals and your millet okay so basically all the food groups are there this all food groups that you you can think of okay uh vitamin b12 uh, as i mentioned mainly available in non veg food okay uh dairy may have some amount 
sprout moth beans you know, homemade pickle and dried kokum will have some amount of b12 but you know if you're vegetarian then i would recommend to check your b12 on a regular basis every 3 months or so you know because b12 will give you some symptoms deficiency will give you symptoms of anemia or you know uh, neuropathy or you know just a lot of issues with the uh, central nervous system and peripheral nervous system uh, here is your uh, choline uh, important uh, b12 choline and your uh, folate is important for neural tube development uh, choline deficiency can also cause fatty liver okay so make sure very important for pregnant mothers uh, tell her to have choline is a very uh, egg is a very good source of choline actually you know uh, so she can have eggs uh, fish is good source liver of course uh, cauliflower is another very good source of choline okay your mushrooms uh, and your you know your sprouts and green leafy vegetables and also your coriander powder so your coriander powder is uh, you know uh, it's high in choline uh seeds is a uh, uh, many people they they buy fruits and vegetables they, but they will throw away the seeds uh like for example a pumpkin uh, so i tell them you know i just joke around with them and i say that you can throw away the pumpkin but keep the seeds seeds are much more nutritious you know so this is important your uh, pumpkin seeds sunflower seeds musk and melon seeds watermelon seeds is all the different kind of seeds okay so you either can make it as a mouth freshener okay or you can make a powder roast it make a powder and put it in your diet give it to children 3 months 6 months uh, children about 6 months of age those children will do really well you know this is just wanted to show you consistency of complementary feeding look at how how uh, Uh, kind of uh, how thick is it is you know even uh, spinach puree and carrot puree you want to have this kind of thick puree when you give complementary feeding okay so uh, again this one this are the some of the charts that are created by dr uh, uh, ratna uh, what we have done we have taken non veg uh, pregnant mothers and vegetarian pregnant mothers and even in vegetarian we have divided into um pure vegetarian so like no lock, lacto like even vegan mothers uh sorry uh, mothers with uh, uh, only dairy or mothers with dairy and uh, eggs okay so uh, we have divided into different categories so you know exactly how much to offer okay so here what we have done is uh, we have given that what is the size of the cup okay uh, what is the size of small fruit what is one handful one bowl one tablespoon one teaspoon okay so ghee butter oil this is your ghee butter oil 30 gram uh, you know and that is 30 grams about 6 teaspoon so your teaspoon size is 5 ml okay uh, sugar jaggery honey try not to have it as much as possible if you want it just not more than 15 grams okay so not much sugar and jaggery uh you know nuts and dry uh, dry fruits about 60 grams of nuts and dry fruits about 5 grams okay so raisins uh spices and oil seeds so like sesame seed and all those you know some any of those seeds you can have 20 gram uh lentils uh, and beans uh, you can have up to 30 grams okay when you cook 30 grams of lentils it will become like a, almost half a bowl you know it will become about 100 grams cooked uh chicken fish meat because this is non vegetarian mother so about 70 grams of chicken mutton uh as you know that 100 gram of chicken or mutton will give you 20 grams uh eggs uh, here we have recommended about two eggs uh, how much milk product about 300 ml of milk products and then the other things so here you know you can go according to what we have recommended okay and then uh, here is like in a portion size okay and you can uh, uh, mother will get about Uh, 77 grams of protein okay non vegetarian mother uh, this is about uh, lacto ovo vegetarian so these are the uh, vegetarian mothers who get uh, uh, you know uh, egg as well as your dairy okay so here we have shown how you will be able to give 75 grams of protein with this kind of diet uh, this is a mother who is only lacto vegetarian not uh, uh, not eggs so when you don't have eggs and we have increased the amount of protein we have increased the amount of uh, you know um, milk okay and we also increase the amount of pulses because this mothers will need support for uh, you know for protein uh, here is a similar charts for lactating mothers also uh, so again you can go through it and you know we have shown that how much does lacto 
like you know this lactating mothers need uh, vegetarian and non vegetarian okay so these are some of the charts over there okay so this is your complementary feeding you can show it to mother the first group is breastfeeding and then you can see subsequently i have already taken the session on this uh, but it's important to kind of you know show this ic material it should be a3 size very good printout lamination okay uh, here this are complementary feeding charts so here we have shown for 6 months how much should be uh, daily intake 4 tablespoon in the morning 4 tablespoon at night okay and here you have your one bowl 240 ml so uh, at 6 uh, 7 months it'll be half a bowl three times a day minimum here we have shown to continue mother's milk and to cook food in mother's milk okay so she can express milk and she can use that for cooking uh, so that way subsequently your quantity goes up uh, your frequency also goes up okay until by the time baby is 1 year old baby start eating table food okay so you don't need to make anything separate okay and this is the consistency of babies when they start uh, you know complementary feeding uh again last chart here we have shown a different uh, powder recipes that you can show mothers uh, this is all the snacks that uh, babies can have some of the cooking techniques okay uh your um, uh, peanut and your uh, carrots this is all the food groups and this is what not to give now peanut and carrot you don't want to give it to babies because they will choke it's very hard okay so just make sure that you don't uh, give anything which is hard and here this is junk food absolutely no junk food to children now any even adults very high in high fructose corn syrup very high in sugar can cause lot of problems okay so this was the last chart and here i'm going to end and uh, definitely do take a print out we have it in hindi we have it in marathi uh, gujarati we are working on but do make the uh, chart for this uh, for your uh, clinic or wherever you work okay thank you